Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of the Carb Watch in 2021. And uh, I am so excited to, to be here with someone I just met about five minutes ago, Laura Man Mangioli. Mangioli? Did I, did I do yep. that right? That's right. <laughs> Laura Mangioli. She is with Scout and Cellar Wines. Uh, which is clean crafted, clean crafted. I knew I was going to mess that up before. Clean crafted wine. Uh, Laura, how are you doing? How is your 2021 going so far? Uh, so far, so good. I can't really complain. No complaints? Uh, no complaints. <laughs> no complaints so far. Um, and, and I know that you've got a, you've got a topic that is, is top of mind for so many of us coming out of 2021. And uh, sorry, coming out of 2020. And, uh, and it's wine. So why don't we start by saying, you know, talking about what clean crafted wine is. So, uh, aside from being delicious, <laughs> it is wine that is not only, um, where the grapes are grown organically and cleanly without synthetic pesticides, but then there is also nothing added to it in the vinification process. There is no sugar added to it. There's no synthetics added to it. And it is wine as nature intended. Um, grapes just purely fermented into alcohol and it makes it taste so pure. Um, since I've, I've been drinking it for about two years now. And now when I drink mass produced wines, I can taste the sugar in it. I can feel myself getting, you know, the typical, um, you know, wine headache or wine, you know, the flush feeling from wine or some people, you know, will get real red and, and um, not be able to drink it. And when you're when, with this wine, so many more people can drink it because there's nothing added to it. So, so when you say vinification process, you know, as a as a uh, ignorant wine drinker uh, like myself, what what is that? Is that just the process at the vineyard in terms of just making the wine? Yeah, that is. You know, after they harvest the grapes, everything that happens to it um, in the process of getting to your bottle. I mean, there's uh, many. <laughs> you know, you'll see the uh, images of like Lucy Ball like stomping yes. the grapes in the big vat and then they you know press it and strain it and do all the process to I, I don't know enough about it to be completely honest I am not a wine expert which is also wonderful but I don't yes know it. but there is a huge process that goes on after the grapes are grown um, which when you buy organic wine from the grocery store a lot of times it is only listed as organic based on its growing process and not the vinification process which is something that I've learned recently that is interesting because there is there's a bunch of organic wines out there. I'll see that label a lot. But one thing, you know, one thing that I just learned about from you, you know, when we were uh, getting introduced, you know, five, 10 minutes ago was this idea of clean crafted wine. And and I'm a I'm a huge craft beer fan. And mm -hmm. um, is there any similarity between craft wine, clean craft wine and, and craft beer? Like, is there a is, are they the same thing? No, not necessarily. I mean, I feel like a craft beer just indicates that it's like, you know, a, a smaller, um, you know, uh, what you, brewery. Like a microbrewery. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess a lot of our, um, what, it, what is great about Scott Cellar is that they source the wine from all over the world that meets the standards. That has nothing added to it. Um, there's no sugar. Um, there, there are up to 250 synthetic additives that get added to our wine in the bottle, like I used to think that just drinking wine was probably the purest form of alcohol because it was just grapes turned into alcohol, but that's not true. There's so many things that they add to it, including mega purple, uh, the, the sugar is astronomical. There are some glasses of wine, uh, bottles of wine that have, you know, over 16 grams of sugar per glass of wine. That's oh, wow. just added to it after the process, right? That's the same as a jelly donut. Like, <laughs> if I realized that I was drinking four jelly donuts, I would rather eat the jelly donut. Right, right. Than drink it. Like, let me at least enjoy it. So um, when you realize, when you, you take all of that stuff out of the wine that we're drinking, you're way less likely to feel crummy. And not only that, you're not packing on the pounds accidentally, let alone all of the you know, all the health uh, risks that sugar is associated with. 
So yeah, it's almost you know because one thing I'm, I, I know you're aware of, and and something that we've talked a lot about is is like drinking. You know, there's the idea of drinking a glass of wine a day is is good for you, and mm-hmm. and I think you know a lot of us take that a little too far. <laughs> you know, when when one glass becomes three. Um, but this seems to me, you know, you're taking out the sugar, but keeping a lot of the good stuff. And and for the life of me, I can't remember, you know, what it is in wine that, that makes it heart healthy. Um, and I should know that because we've talked a lot about it. Um, but there's something about wine that is, you know, good for your heart in moderation. Do you, do you know anything about that out of curiosity? I know I'm throwing you a curveball here. No, that's fine. Um, there is a lot of antioxidants, and I know that it is really good for lowering your blood pressure. Okay. Just, you know, don't take it too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I think we can we can have a, a lot of fun with with the 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 health health benefits <laughs> of wine. <laughs> right. But uh, so so clean crafted wine, you know, Scout and Cellar. It seems that they're they're trying to be super transparent about this vinification process mm-hmm. and kind of is this is it kind of a part of the the whole farm to table movement that we're in right now in terms of you know um letting marketing kind of the farms that it's coming from et cetera? is that is that something similar because i'm I, i'm a huge coffee guy too and i know that there's there's that world where you can see where you know the the beans were 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 grown uh in the coffee world is that kind of what scout and seller is about uh, we definitely are all about supporting these small family uh, run vineyards that have been around for hundreds of years that wanted to do this the right way. Mm-hmm. I mean, essentially, when you look at it, the um, when you're not trying to increase the yield of your grapes by adding synthetic pesticides and doing all sorts of things that farmers will do to increase their yield when you're doing it the right way it does it becomes more expensive sure and so a lot of these vineyards and uh families that have done it the right way have been you know have had to in some way sell out or they'll just sell their grapes to somebody who's doing a red wine blend or something along those lines because they can't get the price to um, justify the, sure. the wine. So, um, we do support a lot of really old families that are small. Um, you know, they, they hand pick their grapes as opposed to using machine operated, which when you use, I mean, think about trying to harvest grapes with a machine. It, there's no way you're getting just grapes with that. There's a sure. whole lot of other things coming in there and while well, yes, they get cleaned and all of that. You're still, um, a lot of those mass produced wines and put additives in their grapes to try and get rid of the the taste that might be associated with other things that enter the wine um, in that process. And so it's a very, um, there is definitely a, a family atmosphere to how we um, locate these wines and then help these people who are doing it the right way and supporting them all the way I feel like I'm rambling. No, no, that no, it's perfect. Like I, I think that's like I, I really think the story about about you know where some of you know the things we consume comes from is is so important. And and what I'm hearing you say is is very similar to the way that you know when you're when you're trying to watch your nutrition, you know we're you know we're kind of training ourselves to look at labels and you know, whatever has the least amount of ingredients tends to be the things that are best for us kind of towards that whole foods idea. Is -hmm. there, can you give us, you know, we're wine drinkers and what should we look, look on or look at in the, in the ingredients list in terms of just the basics? Cause it sounds like Scout and Cellar is, is basically boiling it down to what actually makes wine, wine and not needing all the additives, whether to make it cheaper, to make it more uh, industrialized. Can you kind of go over, like, kind of talk to us about that when, you know, say we, you know, say we're in a grocery store and we want to actually look at the, you know, nutrition of a brand of wine, you know, what can we learn from? Well, have you looked at the back of a wine bottle lately to see the ingredients? Honestly, Laura, I have never looked at the back of a wine bottle. (laughs) I've looked at the price tag and that's about it. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. Uh, When you look at your wine bottle, there is no ingredients list. There is no nutrition list. And do you know why that is? I do not. We are not regulated by the FDA. We are Uh, actually, wine is regulated by the Firearms and Tobacco Association. 
Oh. There is no requirement legally for a bottle of wine to say anything about what is in it, except for the fact that it's alcohol and it can contain sulfites. So you, it's not required to be on there. Um, and I will say that most of the Scout and Cellar wine does not have anything on there as well. But you know when you're buying through us that there is nothing else added to it. It's literally grapes, fermented and alcohol, and that's it. Um, but when you go to the grocery store, you're not going to see that on there. And so you really don't is- know. Like, you don't know how much sugar is in wine, really. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. And something else, one of the most common additives is a product called Mega Purple. And that is what is, it's like a very condensed purple color that's supposed to make the wine's color look more appetizing okay which i mean i've never really um quite understood that but it is also the biggest culprit in staining your teeth and staining your whatever you accidentally spill your wine on um which is which what that's what's interesting with actual with scout and cellar wine i have not only spilled it on a white carpet but i've also had a friend have a bottle break in her luggage when she was traveling and it washes right out. It doesn't stain, which I don't know what that tells you about the rest of the wine that you're putting in your body. But if it's staining your carpet and your clothes and you can't get it out, but our wine, you can, it washes right out literally with soap and water. What does that tell you about what it might be doing to your inside? Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. And cause I've actually <laughs> noticed the, you know, the staining of the teeth, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's mainly an indicator to me that I've drinking too much wine. Uh, <laughs> but, but, but at the same time, like I have wondered, you know, cause it doesn't happen with every bottle of wine. And I wondered if it's a, was that a sign that it's a more expensive wine? Was that a sign that it's a cheaper wine? Um, what I'm fascinated with is like, as consumers, you know, how do we make these good choices when there's really, you know, there's really nothing to go by. You're, you're not regulate, re- regulated by, you know, the FDA in particular. And I'm not sure what um, the, the tobacco industry, you know, what their regulations are like. But like as, as consumers, how do we make good choices in regards to uh, wine and alcohol consumption besides moderation? <laughs> <laughs> that is key. Uh, Yeah, it's knowing the source and trusting the source. I mean, there are really wonderful vineyards out there that are not included in our Wiscout and Cellar. And it's just to actually taking the time to know them. I mean, I guarantee you, if you're going to the grocery store and you're buying barefoot wine or, you know, cupcake or something along those lines, you're probably not getting the cleanest form of wine. Sure. Uh, Mass produced wines are hard. And also, I mean, you get into even the expensive kinds, they're still adding additives to it for whatever reason it may be, whether um, sometimes it's because they want consistent flavor between, you know, from year to year, you know, especially the, you know, your $7 bottle of wine, uh, people want it to taste the same every year. And that's just not uh, something that happens with with grapes. I mean, you have to embrace what happens with them every year as they grow. The weather is different. The temperature is different. The, uh, you know, yield for from everything is different. So if you don't embrace that and you're just trying to cookie cutter your wine every year to satisfy your customers who want it to taste the same, you know, which is fine. That's something that some people really want out of their wine. Um, but if you're somebody who's looking after yourself and what you're consuming and how it's going to be um, affecting your body, then I definitely recommend making sure you're checking out the source that you're getting it from. Um, and that is the one thing about Scout and Cellar is it does, it takes the guesswork out of it. You know, every bottle that's come through there is is tested to make sure that. So when it. you say uh, look at the source, you know, the way I'm um, interpreting that is, is looking at, you know, the vineyard, like where, where was it, where was it grown? Is that, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Between the vineyard and wherever it was processed. Okay. So vineyard and are they generally processed in the same place that it's grown or? A lot of times, yeah. Like when you go out to Napa and you see, you go to the vineyards and you drink the wine, um, it may be that, you know, it may not be done there. It might be done by a mass processing place but then come back to that vineyard to be sold there but a lot of um it just depends a bit on the setup of the vineyard one thing i I, i'm thinking because you know it seems like the the information is not readily available in order to make you know really healthy choices in regards to wine um can we tell anything about the way we feel the next day or the two days after like uh, i'm assuming you know again you know to everyone out there moderation's key um, but is there, you know, 
are we less likely to have a headache with a, a wine from Scout and Cellar versus a Barefoot? Because I'm, I'm assuming sugar plays a big part in, in, okay. in uh, uh, hangovers. Um, excuse me. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on that? Uh, yes, absolutely. It makes a difference in how you feel the next day. I mean, we can't make any, I can't say you won't have a hangover or it's a hangover cure or a guarantee of a hangover. But I will say that you can consume, I have put it to the test. <laughs> And, you know, I mean, you're still consuming alcohol, so you're still going to feel like you drank alcohol. But the when you reduce the amount of sugar, when you it, the stereotypical things you hear about people who can't drink wine because they get wine headaches or, um, you know, the, the flushing or the, sure. the issues with it. And that is actually part of how um, Scout and Cellar came to be, is that uh, the lady who started it all, Sarah Shadonix, um, she is a corporate lawyer turned uh, sommelier, which is your wine certification levels. Um, she was studying to become a psalm, and in the process, she realized that there were some wines that gave her headaches the minute she took a sip, and then there were some that never affected her at all. And she did, dove down the rabbit hole trying to figure out what it was that that made the difference. And the biggest um, epiphany to her was when she was over in Europe and she realized that when she drank these French wines that she didn't get a headache any single night she was there over a several day period and then came back to the U.S. and then again experienced wine headaches. And so um, it seems to be that uh, more foreign wine is made a bit more naturally and without all the additives. Uh, U.S. wine tends to have a bit more of that nature but um through this whole process is how she started scout and sellers because she was like well if clean crafted not only is it probably better for your body in the long run to not be consuming the rest of these synthetic additives or the sugar um but hey who doesn't who wants to wake up without a headache the next day no exactly and 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 one thing we talk a lot about on the carb watch is is being intentional about you know Understanding, you know, the, uh, the relationship between what you consume and then the way you feel either mm -hmm. a day later, three hours later, you know, are you super groggy and tired three mm -hmm. hours after you eat this certain food? Then that's probably not something that uh, works well with you in particular. And it seems mm -hmm. like this is kind of uh, her journey. Sorry, say her name one more time uh, for the Sarah Shadonix. This is probably a part of Sarah's journey in starting Scout and Cellar is is kind of noticing that, hey, this doesn't make me feel good, but then I go over to Italy or France and I don't feel quite as bad. You know, what, what's the deal there? Mm -hmm. Do you know, uh, was there a philosophy that was born out of that in, in starting Scout and Cellar? Was it just the no sugar, no additives philosophy, or was there anything more in terms of what she just knew? I'm, I'm not putting this in my wine. Um, I mean, it just, I think the purest, simplest form of, when we call it from grape to glass, you know, that you're, that there's nothing added to it from the time that grape is growing in the ground to the point that it ends up in your bottle and into your glass that you're just having just the, the basics, like the things that, yeah. the things that wine consists of and nothing more. And, and now I, I kind of want to talk about or segue into the glass part you know, what, what are the, are there limitations with Scout and Cellar in terms of the types of wine that, that you guys make? Is it just a, the reds, the whites, the, you know, what is it that Scout and Cellar makes? Uh, we have uh, anything that meets our standards is capable of becoming a wine that we carry. Huh. Um, and that is, we have a lot of proprietary, um, uh, what's the, um, Sorry, I can't, I don't know why the word is slipping my head, but like we have our own um, comfort. Like a trademark? I guess labels, like our own brand, brands, I guess okay. it's probably, that's a simple word. I shouldn't have forgot, <laughs> but um, we have our own brands, but then we also do like if a, if a vineyard meets our standards, we will carry their wine and we will sell it. Um, but we have white, we have red, rosé, we have bubbles. Um, we actually this year, this year, 2020, we branched out and have um, what we call a mixable, which is like a, a liquor alternative that is, um, it's a lower alcohol content. It's about 40 proof, which is about 20%. Um, and we have two of them now that are both, one's like a, 
a vodka alternative and one's a gin alternative that you can, and it's all made from clean crafted grapes. So they, it's very drinkable. You can drink it by itself or you can use it to mix drinks for people that are wanting alcohol that is made in a, you know, in, in a clean way. Um, and then they also added spritzers last year and we actually just released our first non-alcoholic spritzer um, two days ago. So I'm, I'm excited to, to give that a try and, um, and it's all made from clean crafted grapes, which is, you know, that you're not, I don't know what they put in spritzers that you get from the store, from mixers, mixers and stuff like that. But um, it's really cool to see us branching out and including other forms of um, alcohol so that it's not just wine, because not everybody's a wine drinker too. So Oh, totally. And, and you said something that was interesting to me. So, uh, and we'll get into a little bit of the business side of it. So Scout and Cellar has their own branded wines, and then they also um, maybe license wines that are also clean crafted or, or, you know, come from, you know, a a clean grape source. Is that kind of how it works? So there's a, you know, you get kind of a Scout and Cellar approval or label because of where it comes from is, am I Mm -hmm. right there or am I off? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's right. That's really interesting to me. So, you know, for the listeners out there who, uh, who are really wanting a trusted source of, of alcohol, or in this case, you know, wine in particular, they, what they can do is, is just look for that Scout and Cellar label, uh, whether it's their own brand or someone else's brand. Is that, is that correct? Mm-hmm. I mean, anything that you're going to get that Scout and Cellar is purchased through our website. Um, it, it, we don't have like a storefront and we don't sell to places that then resell Scout and Cellar. You have to um, purchase through a consultant online. Well, wh- why don't we, you know, what we're going to end this segment real quick because what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit deeper next time into certain types of wine. And uh, yeah, I've been talking with, with Jenny uh, about possibly setting up a, a wine segment on Car Watch, so I'm super pumped to get you to come back. Uh, why don't you tell people just where to find you, how to, if they want to inquire more about Scout and Cellar and, and this whole uh, clean crafted wine movement? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think um, Jenny was going to include a link. Will it be on here? Yes, or- we'll put that. We'll put the link in the show notes uh, as well as we'll, we'll pop it up here on the video. Uh, should be right here. Let's see if we can do this, Jenny. We'll do like a quick editing, like pop it up right there. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll put up that link. Is there any, any other, uh, is there a website that they can refer to just if they're on, if they're on the podcast? Sorry? Is there a, a website that, that uh, the listeners can, can go to if they're just listening on the podcast? Yeah. Um, so it's scoutandseller.com backslash. And it's, going to be, um, it is a direct sales company. So okay. my, my friend Blair is our connection with you. So I've, um, wanted to use Blair's link to make sure she gets credit for, um, anybody that, that checks out from here. Cause she's just such a cool human. Um, huge so shout out to Blair Jervis, uh, for this connection. Yeah. Uh, she yeah. is from the tri- tri cities. Uh, we love her. We love her brother, Seth. Uh, no, gosh, I, I think it's, I think it's her husband, <laughs> Seth. <laughs> gosh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Seth. Um, so we'll, we'll put, we'll put her link in the, in the show notes notes and uh and the websites everything that you need to uh to find everything about scout and seller um and laura is there any parting advice for the wine drinkers out there of the world like jenny in the green room because i know she's itching for just a a a huge parting advice for when she consumes her first glass of wine here in about 30 minutes uh, which is (laughs) for reference uh it's 2 p.m on a saturday (laughs) (laughs) Well, if she's going to start drinking now, it should be Scout and Cellar. So. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so that's the parting advice uh, for all the wine drinkers out there who are who are wanting to start drinking wine at 2 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, go to go to Scout and Cellar. Uh, check out the links in the show notes. And and Laura, thank you so much for this. I I, I had never heard of clean crafted wine, um, and you know, and I for one am. am interested in, in being able to, you know, drink wine socially, but also not have it, you know, be detrimental to my health and to, you know, the next three days. So, so I'm really excited about this and, and I, and I hope that you'll come back on and and we'll do some more wine education for everybody out there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ben. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody watching and listening to the Carb Watch. This is Ben Rogers with Performance Medicine Audio. And as always, we will see you guys next time.